Hello everyone, welcome back to Z. Today we bring another intriguing idea, the Berserker Hypothesis and the Dark Forest. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss any update. Consider for a moment what we see when we look at the universe. It is preposterous in some ways. We observe a variety of life forms on Earth that have inhabited this planet continuously for over 3.7 billion years in an unbroken line of tenacious survival. Life on Earth is resilient, and while it has experienced its fair share of extinction events, catastrophes, and outright disasters at the hands of nature, it has never encountered a global extinction that would have sterilized the planet in its entire history. The remelting of the Earth's surface as a result of the Sun's increasing luminosity with age is the only significant means of sterilizing the planet. Other than human technology, there is no means to defeat natural panspermia in the context of the survival of life on Earth. Aside from that, no asteroids, human disasters, nuclear conflict, or anything else can eradicate all life from this planet. Presumably, this resilience is shared by all life in the universe. Any alternative biochemistry we can conceive is as resilient, if not more so, than life on Earth. Once life, particularly microbial life, establishes a foothold on most exoplanets, it likely persists for many billions of years, assuming it is similar to our species. Once it reaches its destination, it is likely that the nature of the stars themselves will determine how long it can survive. Even if complex life is reset, it is likely that the microbial background will rise to complexity a second, third, or fourth time as long as evolution has the chance to take its course and begin anew. As a consequence, this would seem to establish a universe in which tenacious life exists everywhere, and intelligent life should not be uncommon given the sheer number of possibilities that exist. In the greater context, we should not be alone. To be the only planet in the universe, this planet must have won an improbable lottery. In fact, there has never been a lottery with the odds that this concept confronts. This is not a lottery, where the odds are 1 in 300 million. It's at least 1 in 240 sextillion based on the sheer number of sun-like stars. It could be less, as red dwarf stars could render planets like Earth uninhabitable. However, even if we remove red dwarfs and focus on true sun analogs, the numbers are staggering and dwarf lottery odds. The sun is not uncommon. However, this does not imply that anything is nearby. Even for the Milky Way, however, the odds are against being alone. In a galaxy with over 100 billion stars, the overwhelming majority of which are ostensibly suitable for planets with life, the sun's chances of being the only star to host life and civilization are low. There has never been a compelling case for the detection of extraterrestrial life or technology despite our extensive search efforts. There are at best hints, allegations, and candidates, both in SETI and outside of it, none of which are good, and surely no smoking guns, otherwise, there would be no debate on the subject, and the case would be closed. However, everything remains unclear. Until that changes, the great silence seems pervasive, a pall hovering over the Milky Way galaxy, leading us into territory that in some ways remains just as spooky as if we discovered a distant alien civilization in SETI about which we knew almost nothing. Being alone is just as profound as being in a relationship. Surprisingly many individuals appear to believe that being alone is typical, thereby missing this point. Is it? Regarding what? Nothing at present. We do not yet have sufficient knowledge to make such a determination. In essence, we should expect to encounter alien life by default, given that we ourselves are aliens. We are the aliens of others. Clearly, if an alien civilization ever arrived, everything on Earth, from E. coli to alligators to humans, would be alien to them in every aspect. This planet is the sacred grail of astrobiology if nobody has ever been discovered on it. Either we are alone in the universe, in the words of Arthur C. Clarke, or we are not, and both are equally horrifying. This is correct. When and if we do find evidence of aliens, it will likely be fodder for some truly spooky videos on this channel, as aliens will be enigmatic simply by virtue of being detected. Regardless of the outcome, a vast number of concerns will arise. Case in point. This effect was tested on KIC 846-2852, also known as Tabby Star. At first inspection, it appeared to be a strong candidate for alien activity, however, more recent research and observations point to dust doing something strange that we do not yet comprehend. 
This star remains a mystery. However, the initial notion was that it could be consistent with aliens constructing a Dyson sphere, partial sphere, Niven ring, or something similar. Despite the fact that we still don't know what's going on there, this no longer meets the aforementioned criteria despite its initial intrigue. This story is not yet complete. Consider what would have occurred if it had been extraterrestrial. Approximately 1,500 years ago, at the conclusion of the Roman Empire, we would have witnessed an incredibly powerful and technologically advanced alien civilization constructing a megastructure around a star. You can use a Dyson sphere for power generation, but you can also make it into a Death Star by cutting a hole in it and concentrating the power of a sun into a single beam that, if directed at a planet, could destroy it from half the galaxy away. Are they familiar with Earth? Are they already en route? What are their long-term plans for the galaxy? And given the distance, it would take many lifetimes, if ever, for any message sent to them to receive a response, if it does at all. In summary, the discovery of aliens by SETI, if it occurs, will be eerie. However, never discovering aliens is also eerie because you never learn why they do not exist. There could be any number of factors for the utter silence outside, some of which could eventually lead to our silence. Some of these potential solutions to the paradox are rather benign, such as it being difficult to initiate life or life rarely becoming complex on average, but it is also possible that what we observe has been sanitized. If you will, there is no one out there because they are being wiped out by something otherwise invisible. The Berserker Hypothesis is a particularly spooky variant scenario. It was first proposed by science fiction author Fred Saberhagen in his Berserker series, though the idea actually predates that and is more the result of an amalgamation of ideas that arose specifically because of the Hart-Tipler conjecture. To visualize this, you must first consider the Drake Equation, which is a tool for considering how common extraterrestrial life might be. We do not know all of the variables to enter into the equation, we only know a few of the numbers for certain. However, if you plug in the most conservative numbers you can reasonably imagine, you arrive at the conclusion that the Milky Way contains thousands of civilizations. Even using the most conservative estimates, we should see them everywhere. Obviously, we do not encounter them everywhere. It is possible that we merely do not know where to look, but there is an additional possibility. The conjecture partially addresses this issue in that the absence of detectable von Neumann probes in our solar system suggests that they do not exist and that the Drake equation's estimates are incorrect. This is problematic because there is no proof that the numbers we do know for the equation are incorrect. Furthermore, and this was Sagan's response, the absence of evidence does not prove absence. Neither does it make much sense from other perspectives. If there are no extraterrestrials in the Milky Way, what makes Earth so special? This ties in with the rare Earth hypothesis, which might have merit if exoplanets were rare, but they are not. There is nothing that truly distinguishes the Earth from the other billions of planets in the galaxy in terms of genuinely exceptional conditions. Consequently, according to the Hart-Tipler hypothesis, the Earth, its biology, and its civilization are all unicorns. Three against three. In contrast to what we know about science, almost everything, including civilizations, eventually becomes part of a statistical population. If not, you are a unicorn residing on an island similar to the one in Lost, where organic chemistry occurs that occurs nowhere else. And this brings us to galactic life sterilization. Several scenarios involving this concept exist, but the Berserker hypothesis stands out. It works as follows. Self-replicating probes have multiple applications, including colonization and planet disassembly. But there is a possibility that someone could create weaponized von Neumann probes that attack sufficiently advanced technologies other than their own and then self-destruct to keep the galaxy generally free of high technology, possibly for the safety of less developed civilizations, but created by one overarching master civilization, perhaps the first to ever arise in a galaxy, that could even be wiped out. If the progenitor civilization is indeed extinct, then there are no extraterrestrial civilizations, at least advanced ones, in the universe, which explains why we haven't found any evidence of them. Mission drift is an additional concern. The von Neumann probes may have begun with a scientific, exploratory, or colonial mission, but over time, system corruption transformed them into berserkers. 
Ironically, the Drake equation is preserved despite the fact that none of the factors it attempts to account for matter in the face of a galaxy-spanning technological pathogen that renders them all meaningless by destroying everything that would give them significance. This scenario answers all concerns, including why we don't see Dyson spheres, radio beacons, or alien probes passing by, etc. The only explanation is that no one is available to perform these tasks. However, there was once. The Berserker hypothesis, however, has one fundamental flaw. We are still present. It has been demonstrated that even with a very sluggish replication rate for the Berserker probes, if they were intent on eradicating all civilizations, it is more likely than not that we would have already encountered a Berserker. But there is also a non-zero possibility that we've been fortunate thus far, and a Berserker is on his way to eliminate us. Or they may wait until a sufficient level of technological advancement is reached before taking action. The gloomy forest hypothesis is a variation on this line of thought. This concept has been circulating for decades, I believe David Brin first proposed it, but Lu Xixin and Greg Baer have also written about it, it is one of the most eerie solutions to the Fermi paradox. If you assume that survival and resource control are the primary motivations of civilizations, then we may be in a type of cold war in which civilizations do everything possible to remain silent because they are aware that all civilizations are inherently hostile. Do not notify the wolves to the location of the food, and it is preferable for the hunter to conceal rather than alert its prey. Nevertheless, what stands out against the dense forest is that we are still here, despite the fact that it has been suggested that we may not be for much longer, as it is only recently that our radio signals have made us visible as a civilization. Perhaps not enough time has elapsed for the dark forest to be aware of our presence. Alright, this video ends here, thanks for watching everyone. How did you find the content? Is there anything you like to add? Tell us in the comments and subscribe to our channel for regular, in-depth explorations of the fascinating, strange and unknown aspects of the universe we inhabit.